If we look today in the current business situation, what we leaders normally focus on, how to drive the revenue, how to foster innovation in order to drive the revenue, and how to gain the market share. So are all the, the normal business focuses we are normally working on. But in today's time, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of managers and leaders are first focusing on how to survive, meaning cost control, and how to assure maintain liquidity, how to assure the, the cash flow in the company, which is normal and it's absolutely fine. We all know that financial conservative approach is essential for a good business development as well. Too much risk can unfortunately be mortal for, for the business and for our leadership. Now, still we need to consider with these measures, cost control, what, where to cut really, where to, to, to make our business leaner and slimmer, what kind of effect is going to have on the future of the company. It's just to prevent that we take a rush, not fully thought through decisions and not consider how we are going to, to lead the company when we get out of the, the crisis, how we are going to cope with the demand. On the other hand, we also know that it doesn't matter are they layoffs few times happening or they are almost routine layoffs, uh, layoffs or uh, restructuring in the companies that our people have seen in the past how we perceive them, usually pretty negative. We can even hear from people when they say, I don't believe in this restructuring anymore. We had so many that we have another one. But there is a huge impact on the morale of people, on their engagement and motivation, especially after layoffs, their it's going to be very difficult to, peel, uh, to uh, pull people up. If they are not engaged, means what? They are not committed fully to the job. When innovation in the company happens, when we optimize, we need full commitment of our people and we will lack that. On the other hand, we let some people go, which means we lost certain knowledge. They were member of the network that support our processes, which again can make our processes slower, less optimized, allowing more problems or mistakes throughout the processes. How to support them the, uh, going out of the crisis period, how to support better demands. And there is another impact on, let's say, the wider audience. It's always a question of reputation of the company, confidence in the company, and on the second uh, part, also our customers. They tend to defect, they tend to look around with competitors whenever they hear about big, massive layoffs. So always before we take any decision, consider all those aspects. And what can we do today? So what can help us to, to make a proper decision? Let's go here. So why, why are, if we started to speak about layoffs, why are layoffs often ineffective? And I will not say always, because sometimes it's must. And we even say that some natural um, percentage of turnover in the company is always good, human turnover. Why still these layoffs stick with us as a negative experience? Two aspects. One, it stated bad layoffs, which has mostly to do with how it's done. It should be done fairly towards everyone. And it shouldn't have 
a long lasting negative impact further on. So always consider how we are going to communicate. When we say how, it's how we present, communicate. That's the biggest part. On the other side is more rational part, is the wrong reasoning, meaning what we spoke before. Am I just looking to the short-term cost cut effect only now, or am I also considering how this is going to impact our mid and long-term strategy? How is going to support the way out of the crisis? Always considering both. Let's look at the practical examples. Let's learn from those who already went through those situations. Nokia, I know we are taking it so often as an example, but we'll take it in both ways. As first, a bad experience, and then a well, well managed uh, layoff measure. In 2008, there was in early of the year, they at Nokia announced one of the biggest growth of their profit globally, and also in Germany at that time. But unfortunately, in the same year, the um, low-level, low-price Asian competitors pushed Nokia to lower their prices by almost 35%. And at the same time, when Nokia checked their production plans, they saw that the labor cost in Germany went up almost by 20%. What would be the logical decision? Let's close the production plant in Germany. That was in Bochum at that time. It was a question of 2,300 people. How was done? The Vice President of Nokia flew to Germany, gathered all the people, and he announced the layoffs. What happened? People were first surprised. They couldn't believe that a month before, they got all the congratulations about enormous profit profitability raise in the previous year. And the month after, the plant is going to be closed. They were furious. There were very negative and hostile reactions in that moment. And what happened afterwards? Demonstrations, I know that this is more common in Europe or Western uh, world still. Demonstrations happened in front uh, uh, of the plant outside uh, in Bochum. Even the government was involved because they subsidized in certain ways the, the plant and they required the return of those uh, subsidized amounts. Um, the, uh, there were media did their part. So there were pictures of crying employees everywhere, people destroying Nokia phones, Nokia products online so that uh, the message would go around. How it impacted Nokia, this concrete closure. It cost them um, around 200 million euros in 2008, which was in perspective of 2,300 people, more than 80,000 euro per person, which is enormous amount of money. Not to forget that all the media, all the negative impact in the next two years push down their sales and the profitability, so they lost in addition, in addition 900,000 million euro. They learned out of the bad experience. In 2011, so only three years later, because of the situation in which Nokia came, unfortunately, another restructuring was necessary. Now it went throughout the Europe and in, it affected 13 countries. Altogether, 18,000 people should be laid off, made redundant in that, in that case. How they proceeded? They concluded never again uh, repeat the, the story from Bochum. So they engaged, they involved all the country managers in affected countries. They spoke with the management in countries and together they found certain solutions. 
There were softer solutions taken as well in terms of um, possibilities of retirement, um, changing people to other countries, those that were willing to be mobile. But they managed to close this huge restructuring and the people at the end said, it was not easy, but it felt that it was fair, it was done transparently, we had the say, we had the words in the whole story, so we were able to express our opinion, and there was a huge support given to the people. So not only in the financial packages, but also supporting moving to either other units, companies of Nokia, or other companies. So huge support given, and still, if they calculated the cost per person, it was enormous saving in comparison to 2008 layoff. Not to mention that the reputation of Nokia suffered enormously in 2008, and after 2011, at least they got back this reputation of European-based Scandinavian company that cares about the people, which is extremely important for the future. Why? At certain point, we are going to hire again. People remember us, how we hire people, but also how we fire people. And this somehow should be a light, at least should be a light with the values we are living. We cannot be friendly in the first part and neglecting in the second part. So this goes hand in hand. And the second aspect of it are the survivors, so the people that will stay within the company and continue to work. The practice researches showed that job performance of people which stay in the company after layoffs usually drops in average, in average, by 20%. Imagine. And now we have less people who need to, to handle the processes, which means on one side, yes, we have the cost drop, but the impact of less people handling the process is also what? They can be under pressure. There are often more possibilities of the burnout, of, of uh, feeling pressurized at, at work, and definitely they are not going to be as productive as they have been before, which as a result is going to impact the profitability of the company, how competitive can be on the market. Now, what this can mean for us, what can we learn out of that? Before we go into the alternatives, so what else is there for us to be done instead of layoffs? Let's do a short poll. So let's see what you have in mind at the moment. What you believe which measures can happen to you or you will need to take certain decisions in the business. So very shortly, we'll share the poll. Please give me a message that you can see it. So the question that we have is, what measures you expect to happen by end of 2020 in your company because of current COVID-19 situation? Or there might already be certain measures taken. Think about more options are possible. So if you would say we have temporary salary decrease or we are going to restructure, you can choose more options. Take time.
So almost everyone, few more. Eighty percent voted. Are we still missing anyone? Twenty-one. So I give you ten more seconds, and then we are going to end polling. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's see the results. Can we all see results? Okay, temporary unpaid or partially paid leave, so the highest. It's, uh, it's really great to see that you are, or your, you and your management, that you are taking decisions, measures, which are not untaught or too fast and too drastic, because later on it's going to be difficult to get out of it. Restructuring, 48%, so almost half of us, either we started it or we are expecting it, which means restructuring may include probably all three levels above. Redundancies, 38%, temporary salary decrease, 43 So all the levels we are going to check now one by one, the pluses, the minuses, but most important, how to communicate them. Despite we say something, sometimes it's the content that matters. It's how we are going to say, how we are going to communicate will be decisive. So we'll stop sharing here. And let's go back to our slides. Now I need to share them. Here we come. Can you see the slides? If anyone cannot see, just please message. Okay, apparently we can all see it. Now let's go to alternatives. We already saw them in the polls. So what everything we have available, what else can we do? All those alternatives, we need to be fair to say they should, they normally they are done in three different circumstances. Let's say one is in the healthy present because it's something which is going to help us to predict for the future, to keep company agile and slim. One is when short-term problems, volatilities happen, then we need to react, we need to do something. Or if there is uncertain future where we are today, it's probably between both or including both. We have short-term, we don't know how long, but it seems like short-term volatilities. And the future is somehow unsecure. We don't know exactly when, neither we know how it's going to look this new normal, what changes we will need to adapt to. But let's go to the first possible change measures. So it's like long-term changes. Usually two, let's say two main areas. One is prioritize, ruthlessly prioritize, which means check what can we put on hold, where we are not going to lose more if we freeze the project, where can we make savings process-wise, project-wise. Initiatives that we launched, keep them waiting, freeze them for the time when we can afford them. 
The second part, of course, goes with the people. And here is example of AT&T in 2013. Now it was not the crisis measurement, but when AT&T checked their employee base, they said, if we look at what kind of people we have in the next 10 years, half of them will, their positions, not the people, the positions will not be relevant anymore, which means what? We need to start reskilling, retraining them today in order to be able to keep them for the future. Why not just to get rid of them at that moment? Just imagine how, what investment you put in your people to develop them, to train them, to mentor, coach them on the job. The knowledge that they're bringing to the company through the processes, as well as being the face of the company outwards to, to the clients. If we lose them, all this knowledge and all this investment that was done is gone. So it always makes sense to consider, can we train, can we retrain, can we relearn them, can we support them in gaining skills that are going to be relevant in the near future. Of course, it's clear that if I am your salesperson and you need a R and D engineer on the other side, expert in specific area, you cannot train me to that level. But there are other positions which may be used where is a possibility to to move people from one position, upskill them and go to the other position. Also, changing the roles, it's something what can help. Maybe very simple example here from the current situation that people who were before serving in, in the restaurants were teached, were got, they got skills to pack the meals and be able to support the process when it's delivered like a, a very simple part, but still there is a process behind. There are certain skills and measurements that we need to learn to know how, how to, to, to adapt ourselves to these new roles and the new positions. So long-term strategy on how to reskill, retrain our people is something what may be useful even for us despite we are not in the leisure situation, but we are in the middle of the crisis to look at what can we do? Whom can we use? Can we utilize better? Commitment to long-term growth. This is an example from Michelin, tire industries, that when we speak about career planning, what normally comes to our mind? Oh, are the steps. How am I going to grow further on? But it's not always the case. So one part of career planning in some of the companies, and here example was Michelin, is how we can re-qualify our people. Which skills again that they will be able to stay in the company throughout a certain time. So it's again not about promotion, but it's about giving upskilling people in order to, to keep them, but also benefit from their knowledge, vast knowledge, long year experiences with us. St despite maybe not the most, let's say, short-term effective um, measure, still definitely useful to think about it, to at least get to understand your people what skills, what additional talents they have and they could contribute in the future when certain new skills will be required. Temporary measures, what you mentioned in, in the polls just recently. So it's either temporary leave, partially paid, unpaid, or lower positions or lower salary agreements, meaning lowering the current salaries for the certain percentage. Um, that would help us to keep people or to keep more people.
than we could think about. Again, how this is done is the most important. The, when we people consider, are we going to adhere to the new requirements? And in UAE environment, we need to get um, consent from people that they agree how we do those discussions, it's crucial. And we will go into those discussions as well. And the last one is, yeah, when, when nothing else can be done, then unfortunately we need to part with the people. And it's again, most important to emphasize, it's not our people fault. It's not about bad performance, but it's a business situation that forced us into um, such of tough decisions. The question again is, is it really only about the business situation? Or it could be that the managers haven't done their job, I wouldn't say properly, but to uh, find into all aspects in order to identify those people who are maybe not contributing enough or where is the performance issue and when we come to the situation that we need to lay off what is the easiest way or what we even see in the practice it's not always that those people who contribute at least would be made redundant it can often happen the easiest way. Last in, first out. What gives us less complication, easier time with the people and with the management, and it somehow prevents us to admit that maybe we haven't done everything as we should. So here again, let's think about what can we do. Now, if we look into the current situation, do we really know where our people are? Do we really know them who should stay on and who not? And again, three scenarios. We are between the last two. We are in the short-term volatility and we don't have the certain future. Where are our people? So if we just consider this long-term change in people's strategy, do we know our people well? Or let's put differently, we should know them at least in two perspectives. Are they dedicated? Are they motivated? Which means what? Are they willing to work? Are they willing to adapt? Are they willing to learn? Are they willing to upskill? everything what when we observe them during the day how is their willingness and on the other side what are their current capabilities and again it's not only technical skills it's the knowledge it's the expertise it's the communication skills it's the interaction with the team how they work with each other it's their attitude also toward the current situation are they resilient? Do they help us to get out? Or they, they cannot really help and they're lost. So for every one of us, let's be fair to ourselves, but let's be fair to our people as well. When you will have some time for yourself, please put down criteria for yourself. Three to five, we don't need to exaggerate. What means for you motivation? How you see motivation in people? What that means? Are they, do they show initiative? Do they bring proposals? Do they argue where something needs to be done? Do they come with the problems instead of possible solutions? Think about what means for you motivation and write it down, put down a few criteria. Again, not 10. Less is more, three, up to five. The key criteria, how you understand motivation. And on the other side, I know you have a huge responsibility and every department requires different skills. 
but they are well-prepared matrices where we can put in the skills, and I'm sure that you have them already in place. Now it's just, do we really know where my people are? You might ask yourself, am I going now to look into all my 200 or I don't know how many employees you have? Of course not. Definitely, we all focus on our first level team, which means the team that reports to us. And those who report to you will look into their teams again. So you will get the output, you will get the knowledge where the people are. But this picture is going to help us to identify not who is today the best qualified, because there is always this dispute. Shall I keep the highest qualified people with rather mild or maybe even negative attitude? Or shall I keep those who are thirsty, thrilled to learn, who want to contribute? And we can really upskill them. Always the matter of not what is correct or wrong. In different situations, different decision is going to be the correct one. But at least you can see the trend. Who is going to be your employee support for the future? Who will run, drive the future of your company? So few questions on the right side that make sense to ask ourselves and identify where they are. On purpose, there are no percentages on this chart. Why? Yes, it comes from the situational leadership. But um, let's not put our people into the bell or Gauss curve, because it might be that they don't really fit in. It could be that we have a lot of people who are highly skilled, less motivated. And please don't forget that in the current situation, level of willingness and motivation might drop a bit. And this doesn't show that they are bad employees. It just shows that they are normal human beings impacted by the current situation. Do, I wouldn't say the homework, do the job for yourself. Even if you have one, two colleagues, think about, position yourself in as well, where I am. Am I the right role model, an example to my people? How do I behave? Make a perspective. Sometimes we say like a thumb rule. In the middle of the night, we should be able to know where our people stand from these two perspectives from their willingness to contribute and from their general capabilities. Always we should know where our people are. And this can be a great, great help, not only to think about their development, but also to think about who is going to stay and with whom we need to part to have solid reasoning and then you can be transparent. Because one recommendation, whenever we communicate tough decisions or tough measures, be brutally honest and transparent. It's sometimes we say, we should communicate only things that tomorrow can be placed on the first page of the public newspaper then we can be honest to ourselves and to the others. Let's move to the next, next step. So temporary measures, the ones that you noted as taken in the current situation um, quite massively. So we, we are taking quite a few of those temporary measures, which is good, which means we want to keep the knowledge and the talent we have in the company. What can we learn from behavioral scientists? What psychology can give us in order to make decisions or the ways how we communicate better? There is uh, a proof, psychological proof, that if the concern is higher, we 
are going to adhere or to respect certain measures easier. This we can almost see today on everyday step outside. Those people who are more concerned to get um, uh, infected, we are really going to adhere to the wearing the protective masks or not going out every day in the times when there was um, a stronger lockdown. But on the other side, we may have people who are a bit more, what, positive tempered, not to say reckless. And they might not adhere or respect those rules. So what we can learn out of that? If we see, we as people, as human beings, a bigger loss coming or a bigger sacrifice coming for us personally, that it's going to affect us, we may be willing to accept lesser sacrifice almost willingly. Which means what? If we show what is the potential loss or fear, if we show that fear what might happen, we, your people, may accept temporary measures much easier and also willing to support the company to get out of it. But it needs to be fair. As it stated here, we are willing to accept losing things. We are willing to make sacrifices as long they are fair to everyone. Now the question is, do we have any specifics here in the UAE or in the region? Yes, we may. Why? Probably some of you attended the webinars on the legal side. So what we are allowed to do, which measures we are allowed to take, and toward whom? Meaning what if we are very open we are allowed to take temporary or long-term measures toward non-local employees, toward expat people. But we are not allowed to do the same with the local employees. We'll not discuss is this correct, right, whatever. It is as it is. It may not help the local talents to be employed. Because everyone would say, why, if then I have tight hands with them? So it's, I would see it almost as my personal opinion, as negative measure for the local talents, which is a pity. It's really a pity. But we managers, we need to be honest, transparent, and fair to the other people who will be hit with those measures. What can we do? There are always opportunities. That's why we say managers need to be inventive in a tough situations. So we need to find the ways out. If we agree in the company that we are going to lower the salaries for a certain percentage, 20%, for everyone and maybe for the management even more because we are an example and we want to show that to the people. Then, and please don't forget to communicate the time frame. It's not for, we are afraid of unknown. If we set it for six months and you see after four months that it's not necessary anymore, everyone is going to be happy. But still, communicate the period. Not only we are accepting this measure for unlimited time. This is going to bring fear into our minds, unconfidence, and we are not going to be as dedicated as we could be. So always be transparent on that. Now you have a certain amount of employees who will be affected by the salary cut and a certain amount of employees who will not be affected how we can compensate that end of the year or in the next year when the company goes out of this situation when the productivity profitability is growing we can still calculate that and give 
special bonus to all the people who have been affected during the last crisis time. That's always a possibility. You will probably need to persuade your management about it, but just imagine the trust and loyalty you are going to get from your people who maybe not willingly accepted those temporary measures, but they will do everything for you and for the company because they saw that it was worth doing it. Is it going to cost much? It will cost something. Still, effect of it on their dedication, productivity, the way how they deal with the customers, it's going to be priceless. So think about that. There are always certain limitations, legal or imposed by the companies. There is always the way out. Be inventive. Now, how to communicate those tem temporary measures? Shall we communicate with the group? Shall we communicate with individuals? What makes sense? If we are talking about few people, I don't know, less than 10, then please speak with everyone individually first before doing any announcements. But if we are talking about higher amount of people, then of course announcement will be necessary, which means it makes practically sense to speak to the group and then at the same time or in the certain time frame you will start individual discussions. Few recommendations what should be observed. Communicate always in person. I know that we still have the precautions that we are not all allowed to work uh, in the office but you can um, record yourself and it's going to be streamed. Avoid emails or written messages. We want to see you. When we see you, we feel you. And the impact is totally different. Don't try to be stoic or showing that you are a hero in the situation. Show your feelings. Tell how devastated you are about decision that was made, that was made also by you, because you are part of the management. Same communication, outside and inside, internally and outside externally. We shouldn't, sometimes yes, we do share more internally, but there shouldn't be different numbers about how many people will be affected going around in the public, and internally. Communication needs to be a light, always. Now, when we speak to the group of people, practice showed that there are two most, let's say, convenient ways how we can communicate. So one is we see here very shortly, shortly plus minus plus what that means we will try out we will go into the situation but we communicate positive experience with the people we communicate the negative measure we are going to take and we communicate the optimistic view forward so this will help us that the group of people or maybe the company especially now mostly they are staying at home which is on one side almost helpful imagine you are standing in front of the massive group group of people and you need to communicate that the salaries will go down sometimes can be scary so it's extremely important how it's communicated that's why we start positive we communicate the measure and then we show that there is the way out there is a vision the other way goes very well along with what we said before we we human beings we tend to accept negative measure if we see that with this negative measure we prevent the higher sacrifice which can look like what in order not to 
have to lay off people. We decided that we are going to take um, uh, salary cuts or uh, we stay for unpaid, uh, we decided on unpaid leave. Meaning you show the bigger negative impact and then the, the real measure seems almost acceptable to us. Now you may say, but this is manipulation. What is manipulation? Mani manipulare means move with your hand, which what we do. We are using manipulative tool in order to support and even motivate people or create the environment in which people will be able to motivate themselves. So yes, we are using the manipulative tools, but intention why we are using that is we want to help people to step together, to go forward, to work dedicatedly despite the situation so that we can get out as soon as possible. It's, we can say about those tools, it's like a hammer. If you take a hammer, you can either build a nice furniture or you can harm a person. It's not about the tool. The tool itself, it's not positive or negative. It's our intention which can be positive or negative. And in this case, we use the manipulative tool in order to achieve the best in the shortest time. How this can look like? Let's look at the both examples. So if we take plus minus plus communication, how this could sound like? Example, just short part without the introduction. We achieved together growth of 20% year over year in the last two difficult years. And we together with you proved to know our clients well, to customize our approach and achieve best results with them. We are impacted hard by COVID-19, as many big and small players are worldwide. We need to step together again. Reviewing our financials, we saw, we decided, that the lower salaries by 20% are required. All, everyone is requested to commit on 20% lower salary and management team, we decided that we are going by 30% lower salary. We strong, and this is going to be for the next period of six months. We strongly believe that this will give us time to optimize processes and find additional savings in our company and help us go out, get out of this difficult situation stronger and more competitive. So that would be typical plus minus plus communication. Now the other option, which is especially for very harsh decisions, even more convenient would be show the higher loss, show the higher sacrifice first, which might sound like many companies have been affected hardly by current COVID-19 situation. It hit us badly. It seems that not even the high tech players are immune to it. Our financial reviews showed that we need to cut almost 20% of current positions in order to survive. This is totally unacceptable for us and for the management, as we are aware that you are the real reason why this company has been successful so far. Instead of cutting 20% of the people, of the jobs, we took decision to lower salaries for 20% and the management team will lower salaries for 30%.
and this is going to be for the next six months. We know that this is a tough cut into your personal and family budgets, and it will have impact on all our families. Though we strongly believe that this will help us optimize processes and invest into the new skills so we are able to, um, that are required and we are able to cope with the new future we are facing. So that would be an example of minus minus plus, which means we show worse situation and then the current decision almost doesn't look so bad. You will know what is useful for you. You will find the best way to communicate. It's just this is communication when we go one to the group. Afterwards, we always need to speak to people one to one. And here the question is, who is going to speak to the people? Is it HR? Is it the CEO announcement and then they just get the, the email? No, it should be done in person. All the measurements and especially layoffs, they damage the trust of the people enormously. And we know the trust of the people is a foundation element to work together in the business. And it has a huge impact on the loyalty. We cannot grow loyalty if there is no trust. It's a consequence of the trust. So our people deserve it. It's going to cost us time. Yes, it will. But please do take that time. Take time, speak to your people individually, one-to-one. -one. With layoffs, we are going to discuss, it could be with the help of HR and when the help is necessary. But most important, line manager, the one that I report to, the line manager should talk to us. So should talk to the people, everyone individually in this case. And it's even legally, it's necessary to speak to people to get their consent about the certain measures. Now let's look into the one recent example, which was the Airbnb CEO communicating that 25% of people in the group are going to lose job. And he did it incredibly well. So I don't have the full speech because it was quite a long, but the key points, what he did well and how he concluded. So it was 5th of May when communication happened. It was, in, it was recorded, but was in person. There was empathic, passionate speech showing passion about the people and about the company that they built together. There was within the whole message was a detailed background into the financials and not only that there was also how decision was made on reduction so what criteria were taken to keep transparency there there was very clear message about the benefits not only packages it was about the healthcare um, um, insurances, it was about the, let's say, soft part of the package, how to support people moving on. There was felt gratitude to the people, to everyone, and everyone was acknowledged to the hard work done, and at that moment, everyone could feel being still a part of this Airbnb family and being valued for what they did. And there was the conclusion, which was very emotional, that when he said, our mission was not merely about the travel. When we started Airbnb, our original tagline was travel like a human. The human part was always more important than the travel part. What we are about is belonging to something. And at the center of belonging is love. So it was extremely emotional part, well accepted, well accepted by the people. So whenever we need to communicate, 
let's learn from those who are doing that right. Let's look at them, let's see what we can do in the right way in order to give the right message and to show the gratitude even to those with whom we are parting. But before we go into the discussions, the third level, which is layer of discussion or redundancy discussion, let's see again what are the fears in ourselves before we start such a discussions. What we are afraid of, why it's so difficult to be transparent. Why is it difficult to show the feelings sometimes? So what we are afraid of. Let's go to the second poll. We'll stop sharing. And again, you will give me the sign when you're going to see the polls. Now we don't have many questions, um, uh, options. So the question is, when you need to communicate bad news, what concerns you most? And again, you can choose more. One option, how information will be perceived by employee? Am I going to communicate well, meaning am I going to be clear and empathic at the same time? and what emotional reactions to expect and how to handle them. You have a few more seconds to, to give your vote. Let's look where we are. Can we all see it? Otherwise, just show raise your hand that we know if you cannot see it uh-huh great thank you so what is the highest one equally how information will be perceived which means what kind of emotional reactions are to be expected and how to handle them it's very fair we are all human beings and we do care for our people so it's it's normal that we are afraid and it's okay to say afraid how we are going to communicate and how people will react at the end am i going to communicate well 30 percent. so let's go into the discussion let's see what we can do again going back to the slides share mm -hmm. just please let me know if you can see the slides anyone that cannot see slides is it okay okay perfect so we finished here now the question is what to expect from the people. So what, what is the 
what reactions can happen when we are so far that we need to take, let's say, the, the final decision that we need to part with our people. Here are a few options and the source is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She was um, the one exploring and researching a lot how people react when they lose uh, a person they love. So it was these stages of grief. But later on, when they did collaboration, um, uh, connection with the normal business world, how we people react when we lose our livelihood. And losing the job means we are losing the means how to take care of the family, how to assure a certain future for our children, for ourselves, for the family. So it's interesting that we go through similar phases. So what can we do as a manager? Phases are stated one after the other. This doesn't mean that everyone will go through every phase or that phases are going to last equally. It can happen that some people will show anger only and they may never accept or show acceptance but after a while, they will calm down and they may even see that the decision was not bad for them. Some people will go through few of the phases. Some may go through all of them, but it's, there is no rule. So whenever we are in the discussion, we need to adapt according to the situation. Now, what we as managers can do? Denial what that means, what can we observe. Somebody will just deny when you communicate that unfortunately we need to part with you in this concrete case. That's not possible. It's no, it cannot be. It's I, I always did my job well. So it's our consciousness and subconsciousness. We are so overwhelmed that we cannot accept it. So it's like we build a kind of protection around us and we just deny. We don't want to accept it. What you as a manager can do in such a situation. Keep calm, take time. Repeat the same message again. We need to repeat it because probably in the first case was not even hurt. Just think about yourself. If you are doing something on your phone, can you really hear what the other people are talking? It's impossible because our brain works binary. So if we focus on something in that moment, we cannot focus on something else. Then when we drop that, we focus on the other part. So repeat the same message again. Don't show the anger, no need. Just repeat it. Always we should ask ourselves, what about if I would be in their shoes? How I would react in that case? So think about, give explanation again. Some people might react negatively in terms that they will raise the voice. They might shout back. They will express the anger. This is probably also the only situation when we would definitely recommend that you are not alone with the person, but that you would have maybe somebody from the HR or another person in the room when you communicate. It's our practice showed we had with our customers also situation when the person reacted violently back. It's possible. If somebody jumps up, attacks you verbally, um, hopefully not attacks you physically as well, in that case, what to do? Stop. No need to continue discussion. We'll need to, to probably come back again. As it stated here, let the emotions go out. Think about the steam cooker. If you have the steam pot, when the steam there is too much steam, what's going to happen? 
it's going to explode and here is the same. So whenever it's not as severe that the, the person would attack you verbally and but you see that there is anger behind, let them speak. Let the emotions go out. Don't try to self-justify. It's no need. This is a natural reaction. Think about how animals react if they are captured. Think about small gecko. What happens? They are willingly leaving the tail just to escape. Can you imagine? They're letting a part of the body be torn away just that they can escape. And we people have this, how to say, caveman uh, DNA still in our blood, it's in our selves, which helps us to survive the tough situations. And this is probably one of, one of the toughest situations that we are facing. So take time, let the emotions go out. When the anger will calm down, we will be able to discuss. If it's not possible, arrange another meeting. Not everyone is going to be like that. Bargaining, what that means. It could be that when you communicate with me that you need to part with me, I will say, why me? But there was another. John, he goes on the smoke break every hour. How much time he's using for the company and I'm, I'm working hard all the time. So meaning what? We would like to find another victim, not me. Just let's trade off. Let's make a business here that I stay and somebody else will go. What to do in such of cases? First, no need to react to my wording, to what I'm telling you, what John is doing. Discussion is between you and me. So just repeat again and show me clearly that there is only one way forward and this is we need to part unfortunately. Depression. Probably this is something what we are mostly afraid of, that people will start crying in front of us, that they will accuse us that we are responsible for um, their families, for education of their children. It's enormous, enormous pressure on us. Still, we should keep in mind always, Everyone is responsible for himself. Never, never give advices you should have taken care of. No. Listen to them. Imagine, this is the way how we are digesting the bad information. Some will shout, some will cry. Both is emotional reaction. Both is just in the different ways. So if somebody starts crying, show compassion, show understanding, give them time. And maybe the final decisions, the, when acceptance will come, when we agree, when we sign the packages, the agreement itself may not happen today, but the day after, or a few days after. That's very possible. And it's even practice shows that one part is discussion with the person, another part is when we settle all the documentation and where often the HR is there because they are expert in how to, what needs to be considered and sometimes even legal support, not to go against people, but to, to advise what can be done and in what a way. In our region here, highly recommended. Please speak with your people. Direct hiring manager is the one who is responsible to speak with the person when we need to part. This shows respect to the person. They deserve that. This is at least what they deserve. And what we often get as the feedback from people if they would just speak with me and not that the manager in some cases goes on vacation or on a business travel to avoid the discussion, it should never happen. Or on the phone, no. 
So I know that today we are limited, that sometimes we cannot meet a person, then we are forced to. Then probably we will even vote or opt for um, a video call, at least to see the person. It's more personal. Yes, we are uh, risking that the person is going to record and maybe um, post it somewhere. That's possible. But we cannot prevent those things. If we know how we communicate and what we communicate, then we have no fear to repeat the same everywhere. Please do it personally. And the final agreement can be done later on. There is another question which often appears. Shall I come there with, some, with my HR manager? So two people against one, how you would feel. If I'm the one you are going to fire, you are parting with, and you are two people on the other side, you can imagine that I will feel here below. When it's really necessary, okay, but make sure that you are not sitting behind one table and I'm exposed on the other side, then let's somehow find a triangle position, at least from the body language point of view or from the sitting perspective. But if you can do it one-to-one, -one, it's always the best option, always. When it comes to acceptance, how to notice that people are so far? Usually, for majority of us, is when the person say, okay, uh, where I need to sign, this is acceptance. No. Their science far earlier, far earlier. We will uh, listen to one discussion later on, but how we can notice this? When the person asks what that means, are there any other jobs within the global company, for example, or within the group? What this shows? I already accept it because I'm already thinking about the other options. Okay, yes, within the group, but still, I'm already in the face of acceptance. I'm already rationally thinking about what will come next. Or when we get the question, what kind of packages, so what kind of benefits can I think of or are planned? This is purely rational thinking about the next step, which shows the person is already going toward the acceptance. And that's a great sign. Great sign, so that means you can move to the rational discussion. Whenever we are in emotional phase, when we say, according to the iceberg in the less conscious part, crying, shouting, accusing, trying to tr find a trade-off with you. That means I am rationally not able to, to listen to you and to accept any proposal from you. But when we slowly move up toward the rational level, then at least I'm hearing your proposal before probably many things I haven't even heard. So now to try out, and then we will leave all the questions possible to discuss what, where, what about if this happened. Let's go into one situation. Let's try out one discussion. And we'll just make a kind of structure so that we have here a structure. And let's first explain why the structure. Um, we need a certain framework. So what we can give, it's a frame, but the wording, how something will be said, this needs to come from you because it will depend on a different situation and it will depend on the person as well. Always give the reason. We human beings from the early age on, which question always appears into our mind? Why? Small children will always ask why, why, why? And this is something what is deep in our blood. We need to be able to give a proper, transparent explanation why 
this is the decision. Not only financial part, so financial circumstances of the company, but why we took exactly this decision. I message, the worst what can happen is, or one of the worst, that when I communicate with the person with whom I need to part, the message would be, our higher management unfortunately found the decision and we need to reduce number of people for 25%. Meaning what now? I am making an alliance with you against our top management. They're the, the bad guys, the ugly ones. And I am fine in my position. Wrong. I should take part of my responsibility. Together with management, we, including myself, we took that decision. Stand behind your decisions. Extremely important. Final decisions to be communicated, meaning all the benefits, what everything happens afterwards. How is the process? What support can we offer? And when we think about the support, in, let's say in this environment, it's um, if we think about Europe-based companies, why? Because in Europe, the, uh, apart maybe from UK, which is a bit more like US, UK style, but still the rest of the Europe, it's very much social oriented, um, how to support people. So European companies might think, this is also what we see in the practice, of how to support people beyond what the law requires. What can we do for them? And there might be support which doesn't cost much. It doesn't need to. It's, imagine I'm working for you for the last 10, 12 years. Maybe I never refreshed my CV in the past time. And now I will be free on the market again, competing with all the rest. Why not to help them how to refresh, how to, how to even prepare a good quality CV, how to show, how to prepare yourself, show your abilities when you are competing on a free market for your next position. This can be a huge support, emotional, psychological support, because it gives us confidence. I'm not alone. I get support, professional support from you. And now I feel confident how I can go and search for new opportunities. And of course, at the end, we'll always be stay concrete, write down specific uh, agreements. Usually we do have two meetings, one when we communicate and one when we settle everything down. There are a few exceptions. Today, when we get company computers, we may put on our computers everything, also personal stuff. If you have trust in your people, and I hope you do have trust in your people, give them time that they download what is personal, that they take uh, or delete pictures, information they don't want to leave there. But of course, we might not always have the full trust in everyone and we might be afraid that they would download things that we don't want them to download. So it's always a matter of a relationship that we build in the time. If you have doubts, still give person time to take information, personal information, but you will probably say do it now. And then you will take all the necessary precautions or take already the computers. It's always a matter what is the best solution in the specific time. I cannot say what works for everyone. It's your judgment because you know your people and you know how they may react. Now we have a structure. Let's go through one discussion and I will ask my, my colleague Igor that we go through the conversation. I hope there will not be a lot of um, emotional outbursts, but yeah, we never know. We'll see.
how will it happen? So, so we just go the, the pure communication part. Hi, hi. Uh, it's very, very good to see you. Um, we don't, today in the current situation, we don't have much opportunities to meet. So please, please take a seat. Hi, Barbara. Uh, you know that we are in a difficult situation as a company and um, as we communicated, we took several measures to grow the business and also to control the cost. Unfortunately, Unfortunately this is not enough to assure that the company can really survive. Yeah, I know it is tough this time and it's difficult for, for all of us as well as for the families, right? After all financials have been reviewed, we took the most, for me personally, the most difficult decision since I'm, I have been in this company. And we need to part with 23 employees. Oh, I didn't expect there would be any job cuts. I mean, there are some rumors, but uh, nobody was looking in this direction. That's tough. I fully agree. Um, unfortunately, um, will not be possible other way. And why we are talking today, I am I'm really very sorry. And why am I so sorry is that I need to part with you as well. I know, I know that we will well, work together. Um, this one I really didn't uh, expect. I mean, this is coming out of blue. Sorry, I'm really We work together on many successful projects. And what I really valued at most from you was you always brought some good ideas on the projects and you always kept the sharp eye for the detail. And this was incredible help on all the projects that successfully finished. And it's not at all your fault. It's not an issue of performance. Unfortunately, it's the situation we are in. And it was the toughest decision we needed to take. And I am taking responsibility from my side. Although, personally, I believe that a good quality people and great performer will always find a solution and will always find the next opportunity. I hope I will be able to help. And I can fully understand that this is no help at the moment for you. Well, I'm, I'm really, I'm really shocked. So, especially now as we're working on this great rate that we got for good dollars, even million dollars. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure of the price it was well. And as and well, there are some people who are coming, you know, like, like a couple of months, months ago. ago. I thought, I thought you would be able to look for cuts somewhere else. Uh, I can understand you, and it's difficult to say anything. Uh, fair when you mentioned the project, um, I agree, we got the project. Is it going to be accomplished? We don't know. And also we don't know when. So why your position? Position will be dropped. It will not exist here in this region anymore. So partially will be covered uh, globally. And just the execution part will stay here and will be added to one of the roles, existing roles. I know that this doesn't help still i am very very sorry that we need to part because, because i know that this is a huge loss for, for the team and for the company um there is no any other choice to work in another region because i'm quite flexible you know so before i moved to this region i was working elsewhere and i have never any troubles to move from one region to another so. Any other options we have? Um, 
it's, it's good to see that you are already thinking about possible solutions. Um, I did discuss with a few other uh, colleagues in the other countries here. In the region, unfortunately not, because it's all the, reg uh, all the countries in the region need to, to take part with some of the team members. So in this region, unfortunately not. I will check globally. I, I cannot promise because it's globally, it's everywhere the same. There is no one safe region in our company. I will again check, but unfortunately, there might be a lot of people who are doing the same, checking opportunities. What I can do is, um, of course, we are going to take care of, to support you in the future. So we prepared and agreed together with the HR, the package, the financial part for a certain amount of months, plus every month in addition for the years uh, of service within the company. And we are taking also some additional points to support you in the region in order if you might search for a job here. So a few months with the health insurance and support to the family as well with the visas. What I personally would want to do, if, if it's of any help to you, is um, I, I can prepare the recommendation. I really valued every minute we have been working together and I will be fair and honest what qualities you, you brought to our company. Uh, we'll prepare in written or I can post in the social media. You tell me what would help you in this situation. All right, I guess there is really, we have no other options, I believe. So let me think about it. Um, I'll get back to you. Can we agree that we would meet tomorrow together with the HR so you prepare all the questions? Uh, they take time um, what, what everything should be discussed and we can then discuss already the package. Can we finalize it tomorrow before it or afterwards? We will see. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. As well. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that um, we could have this discussion in this manner. Okay. We'll do the stuff here and we'll say thank you to my colleague that he was willing to, to play with me the, ro the, the role. So what could we see? It's played, it's acted, of course. It's not the, the real uh, situation. But when there was a sign of going to the rational level, when Igor asked, so are there any other positions? Is there really nothing in the region? What this shows, he's already going, or the person is going toward the rational part, is willing to discuss options. That's great news for us. We shouldn't offer options and packages before we come so far, because people may not listen to them. That's why before we don't see any message that they calm down, that they are thinking about opportunities. No need to discuss the packages yet. We'll need to come again, or you will need to repeat it. And often, if we present the package first, and there is no reaction, no positive reaction, or no reaction at all on the other side, opposite, they are still in emotional mode, then we normally believe, oh gosh, the the package is too small, it's not appropriate one. But it's maybe not the truth. It was just not heard, it was not yet perceived. So take time before you really finalize and disclose all the information. Now, huh? um, before we go to the questions, let's finish with the last slide and then any questions we are willing to discuss, look into, and I hope we can find some answers as well. So now imagine that we are already going a bit out. We are going out. So there is already some signs of um, 
easier way the lockdown is not so severe anymore okay it's going to be now for the heat again but still afterwards we all sense it's going to be more free what to do with our team so our team that suffered now our team that will stay but also our team that is contributing either through the part of the salary or stayed home with the partially or unpaid uh, conditions. How to, to get them back? How to reinstall the trust with them? Because one thing we should never forget that layoffs, even people who are not affected, will severely, severely damage the trust level. Because we ask ourselves immediately, am I the next one? When it's going to be the next wave? What's going to happen next? And every communication, every um, interaction with the people, if it's done wrongly, can make a huge damage and can escalate with the people despite it's a small thing because they are sensitive to everything what's going to happen now what can we do restore a trust and confidence yeah for god's sake how how can we do that first we need to clarify with ourselves if you need it to part with some of your team members it's not a good feeling not for every anyone and if you feel bad and maybe even guilty that's a normal thing. You don't need to be ashamed of that. We don't need to be ashamed of that. It's fair and normal to admit I, I am impacted because I just hurt another person. And there was maybe a team member, a colleague that was also my friend as well. Or maybe you remember how you hired the person, how you supported and developed the person who grew to the level where he or she is today. And these are emotional things, which it's normal that affect us. Ask those questions yourself. Show the feelings, be, be aware of that. Then also clarify with yourself why you still trust this, your company. Why you still have confidence in your company? Come to the answers, because these might be questions that your people are going to ask you. And if you are not capable of bringing some honest but solid answers, their confidence will drop again. And feel free to connect, not only feel free, please do so, call the team together ask them those questions let them speak about emotions it's part of the healing it's part of the strategy to get out of it let's think about let's remember the people that are not with us anymore with the pride with the gratitude what they brought to our company and to our team and now these feelings that you will share with your team it's going to help them to be open, to discuss, and this bring a bond together. So it can help restore a trust. But we need to be honest with ourselves and with them. Otherwise, there will be no trust. Now, we know that we are going forward. We had the goals in the past. During the crisis time, the, the goals, the priorities changed a bit. We need to have a common challenge or a common mission again together. Maybe it's the same that has been the, uh, in the past. Maybe it's reworked. Maybe it's totally new one. Present it, show it, connect it to the values in the company. We need to see this again in front of us. It's like a leading star that we are going to follow. And it's not enough that only the goal is presented, the mission, what we need to do, which challenges we need to overcome, engage us. We want to contribute in the planning and of course, normally in the execution phase. Engage us, get people who are willing to lead certain parts. It's fine if you step a bit back, 
if last time we said in the crisis time we need um, a structure, we need a certain uh, tools that we can cope with the daily routine. But when we are getting out of it, we want more autonomy. Use that. More you will engage us, more committed we are going to be. Trust us. We can deliver many things. But you will still provide support and you will still control. And not control because you don't trust us, but control in order to acknowledge and praise us. You cannot give praise or feedback if you don't control what we have done. So be, today everyone says, be, uh, be a coach to your team. Yes, be like a sport coach to your team. Support when necessary. Give security when, when necessary. Let us learn from mistakes as well. It's part of, of every business that we need to do mistakes. Sometimes we hear zero percentage of mistakes or zero tolerance for mistakes. This doesn't exist. And it's not even okay that we communicate like that. Let us try new things. Be there to support. Let us learn from mistakes, but not repeat them. And if we follow all those points together, it's a good chance that we will still feel we are part of the team. We are bonded again. And we all know that whenever it's tough, usually the difficult situation bring people together and they feel stronger. I hope that this situation now, this crisis, is really going to make teams bond stronger. Because we experienced difficult situation. We learned out of it. And we will be always able to source it again. And we people are different personalities. And if you have done in your companies, any personality analysis, either BISC, Meyer Briggs, Insights Discovery, any uh, or uh, strength assessment, uh, assessment, then you know how your people are. And when we speak about difficult discussions, especially parting with the people or um, taking certain sacrifices on the compensation, then rational people will normally come faster to the acceptance. They might challenge back on, on the packages, on the compensation, but they will be faster on the acceptance side. Emotional part or emotional people, those who normally care more for the, um, the others or um, those who, who source the energy more from the others, they might react differently. So they might be more depressed. They will show depression. They will show like there is no future for me anymore, which again, we will take more time with them. So you can already think about what to expect from the person on the other side to prepare yourself. No need to react emotionally, but do speak about emotions. It's a huge difference. So finishing with this slide, any question, any thoughts, anything, we still have a um, few minutes, not few, we, we still have some time to answer the questions and just please unmute yourself so that we can all hear you. My God, I hope it was not such a difficult topic that we don't even dare to ask anything. Avara, I have a question with regards to the timing to lay off people. Would it be more recommended to do this before the weekend? Is there somehow a better timing? 
probably there is a, a great question, Marie Christine. It's just probably there is never the, the right timing. <laughs> um, it's interesting, you know, even when we hear from people, sometimes they say, they told me on Thursday and they spoiled my whole weekend. And probably intention from the manager was not that at all, but was, was opposite. The manager would say, let's tell them now they have the whole weekend to recover they can think about and they can come back on sunday and we can discuss further on some people will say they didn't tell me before weekend because but now first day in uh, at work again it comes like a bolt from from the blue so it's never the right timing but one thing maybe it's good to be considered um give them time to go home meaning if you communicate i don't know after lunch we don't need to force people to stay in the office till end of the day because they will be emotionally affected let them go home even if you tell them in the morning let them go home and currently because not everyone is still working in the office this is almost a positive circumstances for us because think about my manager communicates with me that I will not have a job anymore. How do I feel? I just lost, I'm hurt. I just lost my livelihood. But what is often my, uh, our next concern? Who knows about them? Is it everyone already aware that I lost my job? That's why people need time for themselves. Let them go home. Let them think about. Currently, if you can have in such of situations face-to-face -face discussions, then do call people in the office. It helps, but let them go home afterwards. And because now are not so many people in the office, this is actually a benefit for both sides. Always make discussions separate. So if there is a separate room, or sometimes it's almost better outside if the room has the ears, <laughs> if all the people are around. But it's, we should provide them certain intimate uh, time, but also intimate um, circumstances, environment, that they are not exposed to the questions immediately. But it's, Sorry, there is no best timing. Thank you, Barbara. Any more questions? Or I'm just checking your chat, see if there is any question in the chat already. Hello? Yes? Barbara. Uh, the question, there is a legal notice period, which can vary from one month up to three months even how to handle uh, that period after the announcement of the firing mm -hmm. um sorry the question is what is the right period or no i mean normally after the announcement of the firing there should be a, 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 the notice period which is from let's say in general one month up to three months depending on the contract so how to manage with the, the fired employee during that period um a very important point thanks to raise that um yes legally or according to the contract is there there are many companies which would actually say you know you have a, a period of i don't know three months go home stay at home um search for a job you get the payment but you can stay home that is one side benefit of it if you are afraid that the person may cause a damage or is going to take certain information or is going to spread negative energy to the other people, then that's better option. It costs you three months or some plus the package or whatever it is, but the, the mood of the people, the um, energy that they share, it's sometimes worth much more. If you really need the person, because there is a transition period, I need to transfer my, my responsibilities, my tasks to somebody else, then of course it's useful that I still work. 
you will, especially in terms of um, what, how to say, front level positions, customer facing positions, unless you have the 100% trust in the person, it would be recommendable not to send them to see customers anymore. Because how we all, um, how we actually react when, when we are emotionally stressed. In that moment, we don't always speak best about my company and my manager. Later on, we may, but at that moment is difficult. But again, there are differences. I can share uh, my experience as well. I, when I left my first job, it was um, a conflict situation. At least I was able to, to, to give the resignation letter, but I got three months and it was persistently three months. I was not allowed to leave earlier. And with one person, we almost didn't talk to each other. And this was the toughest three months in my life because it's, it's not human that you come to work and when you meet the person, you look your own way. You don't even greet each other. There were like posts coming to communicate, which was really bad. But there was one thing I did worked in these three months. I wouldn't say more, but same as before, because the person that was taking the position afterwards, I valued a lot. And I didn't want that she would suffer because of the conflict I had before. So you will find people who will honestly want to, to do the proper job in the last months as well. Observe. The only thing what I can say is if you need them, keep them, observe how they do, give them time, communicate, give them time that they are allowed to search for the jobs and even going to the meetings. Why not? Because we will do that. The question is just, am I going to hide that behind your back, do it behind your back, or am I going to communicate? If you invite me that I'm allowed to go to, to the interviews, then it will be easier. I will not hide that. And then it's transparent and fair on both sides. So here I will say it's your judgment. If you have fears that negative impact for the customers or for the company may happen, it's better to let people go and stay home and pay the time. If you trust that they are really going to still work at that time because they want to, and you trust them that you can rely on them personally, then let them stay for the, um, uh, the period of the uh, notice period, however long it is. But there is no one universal answer. Legally, we could say, yes, you have right, but having right and what's the impact at the end are unfortunately two different things. What we often see in the region, here in the region, is that uh, people are often let go and stay home. I don't know why. Is it lack of trust or it's more that we just want to give them opportunity to focus on the future and save the face in front of uh, their uh, previous colleagues. I don't know. Because one question is also maybe connected. When people leave, usually there is a kind of farewell uh, meeting, session, whatever it is. Not everyone wants that especially a bit more introvert thinking people might not always enjoy it. So it's good to ask them what they prefer. Some would prefer just to go to close and focus on the future. Could I give you at least some idea? I know that I cannot uh, answer exactly and I'm sorry for that. Yes. Thank you. With pleasure. Any other question?
So often what happens or what cons uh, concerns are also there is, shall we offer them more support than is legally required? Always your decision, always. But think about support that doesn't cost much, but gives a lot. Here, UAE is a small market. Even GCC or Middle East, it's not such a big market. And think about if we are working in certain industry, more or less we are circling around. And you know your competitors, or maybe they're not even competitors, maybe they're your suppliers or your principal. We may meet with each other again in the future. It's when we are in the role of the manager that needs to lead the discussion to part. It's our responsibility to do it ethically well, so that you can be calm with yourself. You deserve that, your people deserve that, so that you know how you are going to do it. How your people will react will show their behavior. If they react unfairly, too emotionally, just think about the gecko. What gecko does to save his life, even let the part of the body away. This is the survival instinct that we have and that we are using in those situations. On the other side, if I'm the employee and you are going to part with me, I should also think about how am I going to react because my reaction now is going to pace the to make a path for me in the future. It's always on both sides, but it's our responsibility as managers that we take care of the human ethical way. This is the image of yourself, what kind of leader you are, and that's the image of your company. And in today's world, when it's so difficult to get high quality people, and I don't mean only technically qualified, but a, a good trustable personalities. It's so difficult to get them. Our company image, reputation, is going to be a huge role. It will play a huge role. And we know the, the websites like the ceiling uh, where people can give their experiences, how they felt, while we went through the tough situations, also through the uh, layoff phase. And it can give a one point more for your company against somebody else. So it's a tough situation, but the best leaders are always made in the difficult situations. When it's nice and fun, everyone can be a leader. Any other question? Otherwise, I will say thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for the questions you raised, uh, for participating in the polls. And I wish you the strong resilience to get through the current situation. I hope that you can use any tips that we discussed today, any recommendations and you will get, as last time, link to the uh, session and also the, the presentation. Whatever you can use, please use it. If it's going to help yourself, your company and your people, then we are going to be happy. And as a final, it is approaching, so I wish you all a peaceful, this year different. It's holidays, blessing, and I hope that afterwards, we can all come back one step closer to the new normal and that we can really focus on our work and our customers again. All the best and have a, a good celebration, the last uh, working day and then a nice family celebration. Bye bye, see you next week. Take, Take care, care. Yeah, next week, two o'clock again. Yes, I almost forgot. Bye. Take care.